Father, take absolute control in the mighty name of Jesus. Jeremiah said, Then the Lord touched my mouth and said, I have put my word in your mouth. Father, put your word in my mouth in Jesus' name. I pray, O Lord, that by your grace, O Lord, your word I have you put in my mouth will be spoken without any interruption. I will touch the heart of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, O Lord, that according to Psalm 119, verse 130, the unfolding of your, of your word bring light. Let the light of heaven illuminate the heart of your children in the mighty name of Jesus. And give understanding to the simple. Keep them simple, O Lord, that your word will be received as it is spoken to the glory of your name. In the mighty name of Jesus. Joseph said, God will give Pharaoh an answer of peace. I pray through your word, O Lord, let an answer of peace come into the lives of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus, that whatever challenges they may be facing at this time, Father, your word will bring comfort to their situation. And your name will be glorified. Holy Spirit, take control. When all is said and done, let your name be glorified. And let all of us, your children, be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Navigating life's twists and turns. Lessons from the life of King David. Navigating life's twists and turns. Lessons from the life of King David. Most of us are familiar with um, King David. Uh, most of us are familiar with him as a songwriter, as the psalmist, as someone that was beloved of the Lord, as someone that God even had a covenant with, that someone in this generation will always be on the throne of Israel. What I don't know if we try to really conceptualize is what he went through, the challenges he faced, uh, the problems that, that really came into his life before he could get to where he ended in. And we shall be looking at those things uh, this afternoon. Our tests are taken from the first one is from the book of Job, chapter 14, verses 1 and 2. Job 14, 1 and 2. It reads, How frail is humanity, how short is life, how full of trouble. We blossom like a flower and then wither. Like a passing shadow, we quickly disappear. And then 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. It says, the temptations in your life are no different from others' experience. And God is faithful. He will not allow the temptation to be more than what you can stand. When you are tempted, he will show you a way out so that you can endure. Talking about the navigating life's twists and turns, that presupposes, of course, that life is full of twists and turns. Most of all, we wish that life is a straight path where you can see the end of the journey from the beginning, where everything goes the way you want, where your challenges are minimal, where you ask for it and it is yours. You want to get married, there's no delay. You want children, the children come as, as many as you want. No child is incorrigible, none is disobeying you. Your job is going great, there's no loss of, loss of job, there's no mar marital quibble, quibbles, Everything is going well. That's what all of us want. Uh, but that's like living in a fool's paradise. Because it doesn't exist. The best of us will still go through the challenges of life. That's just the way it is. And I chose the life of David because he is one that many of us will want to say, oh, what a beautiful life he had. Really. He was a king. He was beloved of the Lord. 3,000 years after, we're still talking about him. But have we taken time to look at what he went through as an individual? The challenges that he faced, are we ready to face those challenges? Yet in the reality of life, you don't get to great heights without going through those challenges. Yours may be different from mine, just as mine will be different from yours. We, didn't, we don't get together to, to compare challenges. We don't come, come together to, to con, compare problems or whatever we are hiding under our nice suits. But the truth of, of the life is that you are going through yours, I'm going through mine. Please, if you think somebody, you are looking at somebody and you think everything is okay, by the grace of God, everything is okay. But all he has to do is open his mouth. And it will be obvious to you that 
he also know has places where he's choose and pinching him. That is life. And the essence of, of, of what I'm, I'm, I'm asked to discuss with you today is to encourage you not to lose heart when your own challenges come. Because it will come. There's no running away from it. It is part of life. And I chose David as the subject of our discussion because he's an example of somebody who pretty many of us will, will, will love the kind of life he had. Particularly the good, the good ones we, we, which we choose to emphasize most of the time. The fact that he was a beloved of the Lord. The fact that he wrote all the, most of the book of Psalm. The fact that God uh, said his generation will always be on the throne of Israel. The fact that he ended, generally ended well. The fact that he was able to replace himself with a the, with the, with the son that he wanted, Solomon. The fact that today, 3,000 years after, we still talk about him. The fact that he was a progenitor, the earthly progenitor of Jesus. All of those things are so positive. How about the negative side? How about the challenges he faced? How about the problems that he confronted? May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. And the essence of this discussion is so that when your own issues come, it doesn't mean you won't get to your destination. It only means that those are parts of the journey. May God have mercy on us in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So life's journey is never in a straight trajectory. Although stretches of smooth ride may abound, there will also painful twists and turns. There will be the peaks and there will be the valleys. There will be days of bright sunshine and days of cloud overcasts. There will be days when life will be drabbed and dreary. And there will be days when life will be a blast and will be blistering. If we will succeed in life, let's also get you ready for significant failures. If we will excel in life, we should be ready for extensive disappointments. Many will give up on life if they have full idea of the pitfalls along the journey. Many will abandon their dreams if they know in advance sacrifices such attainment of their dreams will require. Interpassed with life successes will be terrible failures. Most mountain top experiences are made sweeter by the valley experiences that preceded them. No matter how much we desire, a straight path in life. There is no avoiding the twists and the turns. Each of us here can think back about what we went through to get to where we are today. Praise the Lord. And do you still have hopes and aspirations? May God take you to that hopes and aspiration in Jesus' name. But get it straight. There will be challenges along the path. God never promised that we will avoid those challenges. God, they strengthen us. They empower us. They get us ready for the ultimate goal. May God be helpful to us in Jesus' name. So be assured, even after this, this stretch of straight road, and things are working out well for you, get ready. Be assured. Close by is another stretch when only the next steps are revealed to you. And you have to trust God for succeeding in that next step. Isn't that why God is God? If all is well, why will you need him? If you know what tomorrow holds for you, if before you ask for it, it's yours. I, I'm an example of such a situa of situation, starting out in life, when just, just, we, just, just think about it and it is yours. School system, straightforward. Job, before I finished my service, the job was waiting. All is well. And then the issues of life started cropping up. And then the challenges of life came. And the reality dawned on me that life is never, never, never truly all through smooth sailing. There are challenges. There will be twists. There will be turns. Yours may be different from mine. Mine will be different from you. We are all going through something. May God see all through all our challenges in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's look at King David. Before David became the most admired king of Israel, celebrated by the people and beloved of God. Before God loved him so much that he promised that there will always be someone from his lineage on the throne of Israel. David experienced troubles and trials that most of us will cringe from. Let's look at some of them. Now, 
from the youngest age, as a teenager, his father had eight boys. The most important person in the country said they are com he is coming that somewhere now, coming to visit the, 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 the family. They kept seven members of the family at home, and they asked one to stay in the farm to look after the sheep. And that one was David. Uh, was David. How well do they think of him? Of course, they have concluded that this guy cannot be coming for this boy. I mean, he's the youngest. It could be somebody else, but not him. That is the own parents. And that was the beginning of the challenges of his life. So I said he was despised by his father and was left out when the king maker visited. Unknown to Jesse, his father, David was the one Samuel came to anoint. 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 11. David was despised by his older brother, Eliab, for coming to the battlefront. Eliab said, you this young boy, what are you coming to do here? Who did you leave those little, those few sheep with? I know, you are just coming to come and see what is happening here. Unknown to Eliab, the hope of the country rested on David. He, Eliab, and the rest of them have been running for, from Goliath for 40 days and 40 nights. And here come David, who invariably defeated Goliath. But he was despised. He was even despised by his, and you can see that in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 28. David was even despised by his wife for dancing before the Lord with ceaseless abandon. Unknown to her, this is one of the reasons David had a special place in God's heart. 2 Samuel 6, 16. David was despised by his benefactor, neighbor. Unknown to neighbor, David will later become the husband of neighbor's wife. 1 Samuel 25, 10. He was despised by his general, Joab, the commander of his army. Unknown to Joab, destruction awaits any man who opposes the anointing of God. Of course, Joab was killed by Solomon when he asked to become the husband of Abishag, the ex-girlfriend of David. David was despised by his own children, Absalom and Adonijah. Unknown to them, when a man, when a man rides on a tiger, he may end up in his belly. 2 Samuel 18, 40-15. 1 Kings 2.25. As if the challenges of life wasn't enough for David. As if surviving the onslaught of the king of the land for years was not enough. As if having to uproot his own parents and taking them to the land of Moab to keep them safe is not enough. As if becoming a refugee and, and a rebel in his own country was not enough. After he has said that I became a king. His own son, Absalom, Absalom, rose up against him. And he had to run for his life. He, has to leave, he had to leave the palace, wailing and crying barefooted. That was the king. It's this same David we want to dance like David. It's this same David. David can very well be a prayer point. Because he ended up well. And because of that, you will end well in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter what challenges you are facing now. It doesn't matter what problems are confronting you. It doesn't matter what prayers have not been answered. It doesn't matter what people are even saying about you. You will end well in Jesus' name. The essence of this, of this message is to encourage you that the fact that you will get your destination doesn't mean that the journey will be always be smooth. Doesn't mean that there will be no challenges along the way. Doesn't mean that people will not despise you along the way. But if God be for you, who can be against you? Let them be against you. They will not be fighting you. They are fighting God. Because God is on your side. And because God is on your side, you are victorious in the mighty name of Jesus. So, don't be bothered by the challenges of today. Because your tomorrow is going to be glorious. Don't let the transcend problems of the present. Close your eyes from the wonderful promise of tomorrow. Because just like David ended well, you will end well in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So he was despised by his own, his own, his own child, Absalom. As if that enough, was not enough, God gave him victory over that. And it was so terrible that Absalom messed his daddy up until he himself got killed. Because advised by Adonijah, Absalom, Adonijah said, you don't want to make yourself detestable to your father so that he would not even think of reconciliation with you. Go and sleep with his wives. And don't do it secretly. 
Do it when everybody is looking. And that's what he did. Invariably, Absalom was killed. And David became the king one more time. But can you imagine what would be going through his mind during that period? Can you imagine what kind of child? That's a son that he gave back to. It's not Saul this time around. It's not one enemy somewhere this time around. It's his own son, for God's sake. So the challenge of life doesn't exclude anybody. And when your own comes, please, with confidence and with courage in the God, in the God that you serve, face it and know with assurance that because God is on your side, you will be victorious. In the mighty name of Jesus. You know, twice David was going to be killed by his own boss that he was helping. Because the time came when the Bible says the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And, this, and the evil spirit from the Lord came to his life. So he was basically raving mad occasionally. And he said, well, let's look for somebody who can play nice music. And then when the problem comes on him, he will play the music and then uh, he, will, he, will, he will recover a little. And they brought David. But twice while David was playing this music, Saul took the javelin and was going to pin him to the wall. Of course, he escaped and he ran away. A time came when, while David was all over the place running away from Saul, that he said one city, Kayla, was being attacked. And he took his boys, the, the, those in debt, those in distress that became the mighty uh, men of, of, of battle for him, took them to uh, Kayla and they saved Kayla from the, those who were attacking Kayla. But then Saul heard that David was there and Saul went after him. And David consulted the Lord. Is Saul truly really coming? Uh, the Lord said, yes, he's coming. Are the people of this town that are just saved, are they going to deliver me to him? The Lord said, they will deliver you. And he ran. So how many people have you helped? And instead of saying thank you, they are looking for ways to hurt you. You are not the first one. It's not new. It's part of the challenges of life. Would that stop you from being of help to people? No. Because as you lend to the poor, as you give to the poor, you are lending to God. And the reward of your effort will come in the mighty name of Jesus. So the point we are making is that challenges of life is there for somebody who will succeed in life. Tell me anybody who has excelled in life, who has succeeded in life, and I will tell you somebody who has stories to tell about what they went through before they got to that point. So yours will not consume you in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Or do you want to talk, okay, after surviving the issue of Absalom, then Adonijah came in. And like I said in the morning, the, the king is still on the throne. And this guy just took some 50 men and got some chariots, and he started, Hey, King Adonijah, really? Meanwhile, David had already said that Solomon is going to succeed him. So, in defilement of the father's instruction, he installed himself king. Of course, he died in the process. May God have mercy on us in Jesus' name. So, despite all of this, David was a man after God's heart. David... God made him triumph over all his adversaries. You will triumph over all your adversaries in Jesus' name. Whatever challenges are facing you, you will see their end in Jesus' name. Whatever issues are confronting you now that appears to be capable of consuming you, they will not consume you. You will see their end and you will give testimony of it in Jesus' name. Maybe there are things you will be trusting God for and you are wondering, is this God listening? Well, God doesn't go on vacation. It's just that he operates according to his own timetable. And our timing and God's timing are different. But at his own time, he will answer you. And he will deliver that thing to you. And you will come to testify in the mighty name of Jesus. So what lessons can we learn from some of these things? We can learn the lesson that it is possible for us to have our own fair share of life's challenges. But nothing can stop us from reaching the goal that God has set for us. Nothing. Maybe to us, others may seem to be enjoying their marriages, but you are not, you're only enduring yours. Don't worry, there will be a turnaround in the mighty name of Jesus. 
What take others a few weeks to achieve is taking you years. Don't worry. It's not how, how fast that matters. It's getting to the destination on time. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will get to your end result. You get your end result in time in the mighty name of Jesus. Maybe it appears that you're on this close lane of life. That is by human calculation. By God's calculation, nothing is slow, nothing is fast. It has, uh, it, it, it has mapped out a movie of your life. And that's what you are living. And nothing can take you off course in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, I mean, we are talking about David. But it's not just David. Think through all those in the Bible and even in contemporary times who are succeeding. Who God has interest in. You will see that they also face significant challenges. Because it's, it's because of because they overcome those challenges, that's why their victory became sweet. That is why they can look back and say, thank you, God. And you will look back and you will thank God also in the mighty name of Jesus. This may not be working out now for you on the surface, but I guarantee you by the, by the power in the name of Jesus, they will work out for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The marriage that is cracking, that is uh, on one leg, by the mighty name of Jesus, God will sort it out. The storm that is confronting you, God will steal the storm. In the mighty name of Jesus, that sickness that seems to be capable of consuming you or members of your family, you will not die of that sickness. Your family members will not die of that sickness. You will come to testify to the goodness of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, the business that is tottering, by the mighty name of Jesus, it will come to stability in the mighty name of Jesus. God will look with favor upon you. I will come true for you. In the mighty name of Jesus. Remember, when God allowed these challenges not to consume you, God doesn't leave his soldiers in the battlefront. That's not the God we serve. He may allow things to go on for some time because of specific reasons. Those, those are some of the things we want to look at. One of them could be that he is building you up. He is strengthening you. He is getting you ready for the grace and the glory that is waiting for you in front. He is making you strong so that you will also be a source of encouragement for other people. So, don't, don't, don't quibble. Don't, don't grumble. Talk to God. What exactly are you teaching me here? What do you want me to know here? And be ready to go with him. And he will strengthen you in Jesus' name. Because in the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16 to 18. 2 Corinthians 4, 16 to 18. The Bible says, Therefore, and this is for you, please take this. I don't know your specific situation, but I know people are going through stuff. because I'm going through my own stuff too. And I'm confident that I will overcome it. My problems will not overcome me. My challenges will not overcome me. It will not overwhelm me. And yours will not overwhelm you in Jesus' name. I take courage in the word of God. And I ask you to take courage in the word of God. Where it says, again, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Why don't we lose heart? Though outwardly, we may be wasting away. Things may not be going the way we want. Challenges may be appearing to be capable of overwhelming us. So outwardly, we may be wasting away, yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. You will be renewed day by day in Jesus' name. Your strength will not fail you in Jesus' name. Because our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, and what is unseen is eternal. That is the point I am making. You cannot allow the transient to stop you from getting the enduring. You cannot allow, you cannot allow what is happening now to determine your future. And that's, that's why I, 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 I pity those who don't have God. Because when they don't have God and the challenges of life come, they all feel that this is too much. And then they take their own lives. Meanwhile, the glorious future may still be there. And I know it is there for you and me. Because we serve a glorious God. So, whatever it is we are facing is a light affliction. It's only for the present. The glory of the latter shall be much greater than the former. Because that is the word of God. And it is for you and it's for me and it will manifest in our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. So, take everything in stride. Take everything in stride. The good, sometimes the bad, and sometimes the ugly. The disappointments, the rejections, the doubts, the second guessing are all part of the bargain. Don't focus on the present discomfort and miss the larger picture. 
Don't be distracted by the transcend that you miss the enduring. Don't give up due to today's, today's challenges and lose out on tomorrow's glory. You will not give up in Jesus' name. Don't you, I mean, in the morning, I, I alluded to it. Tell me, you can look around us in contemporary days. I mean, in Christendom, you will count our GO as one of the generous by every measure. He prays for people wombs that did not exist come back and bear two children. He prays for people destiny that are already bastardized come back to life. Well, he also lost a 42-year-old. Oh, because he didn't know how to pray? Because he didn't have the, have the connection? Because he didn't have the money? No. God is using that to also tell us that nobody is excluded. God didn't love him less. And so, from those things, we can learn a lesson. God is still God. God is still God. So irrespective of what you are going through, it will not stop God from being God. And he will not leave you alone. I will not forsake you. And his strength upon your life will not fail. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Be assured, brothers and sisters, that all will work well for your good ultimately. Romans 8.28 says, And we know that God causes everything to work together for good of those who love God. Do you love God? If you love God, I guarantee you, you are going to be victorious. Everything will work well. What you are going through is only uh, uh, the beginning. And it's not the beginning that matters. It's the end. Like my pastor will say, you are in a, a football match or a soccer match. You can be losing in the beginning, at the beginning. But do people remember uh, what were you, you were doing at, when it was a quarter of the, of the game? Or half of the game? What do they care about? They care about the final results. Praise the Lord. When we were in school, in those days of uh, three semesters, or, or, or my, uh, yeah, three semesters, you can do or several exams. You can do one exam and get something and get another, but you do the last one and you ace it. At the end of the day, it is your GPA that matters, right? Of course, we would rather get A in all the exams. And then your GPA is 99.9. .9. But how many people ever get 99.9? .9? But the fact that you don't, didn't get the, 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 what you want the first time or second time doesn't mean that you have failed. Praise the Lord. The message is this. Please, don't judge yourself. Don't, 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 don't kill yourself. Don't over worry. Don't become depressed. Don't become sick. Because you are going through issues now. It is transient. It is temporary. It will go away. In the mighty name of Jesus. David's end was glorious. Your end will be glorious. David overcame all his challenges. You overcome all your challenges. At the end, David can look back. When he was dying, he wrote some beautiful passages. Just thanking God for where he started and where he ended. The son that he wanted to succeed him, succeeded him. The building he wanted to build for God. God said, you are a man of blood. You don't do it. But then he your son will do it for me. And then God promised. And if you read through the books of uh, First Samuel, Second Samuel, First King, Second King, the Chronicles, you will see, even as, 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 as kings in Israel were sinning and God wanted to wipe them out, God will remember. I promised my son David. I said it will never occur that there will be nobody from his lineage on the throne of Israel. Because of that, the worst and the worst. Manasseh was so terrible that they said blood flo was flowing on the street of, of, of Jerusalem. It was so terrible that it wasn't in the Bible, but Bible historian says that Isaiah the prophet was killed son in two. They put him inside a hollow um, tree and cut it into two. It was that bad. And God was going to just completely wipe them out. But God said, hmm, I remember my promise to my son David. Does it mean David was perfect? Of course, you know he wasn't perfect. He committed the tree in one sin. Just as you are not perfect, and I'm not perfect. But when God chooses to love you, that love covers everything. And because I know God cares about you, he will keep you to the very end. And you have to, sweet stories to tell in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. 
So, all is working well for your good. And we know that God causes everything to work well together. All will work well for you in Jesus' name. It isn't what people do to you that matters. It's not what people say about you that matters. It's not how people treat you that matters. It is focusing on the path God has charted for you. It is running the race God has designed for you. It is staying in the lane God made for you. It's your confidence in God that matters. And that is what will sustain you to the very end in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. In concluding, I said here, just as success is not final, failure doesn't have to be fatal. Just rely on God's help and summon the courage to continue. Because if you fail or falter in the day of adversity, the Bible says your strength is small. But because you are relying on God, whose strength is not small, you will not fail in Jesus' name. Remember, success or failure, defeat or triumph, setback or forward movement, all are just spots in the journey of life with its twists and turns. Should therefore be magnanimous in victory and courageous in defeat. Make the best of the journey, not the end that matters. All in all, our overall confidence remains strong as assured by the mutable word of God. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. That's a long passage. I'll just read some of it, just uh, from a portion of it. And it says, and this is what I want you to hold on to as we journey into the week, into the new month, into the rest of the year, and into our future. I'm convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death nor life. Neither angels nor demons. Neither our fears for today, whatever your fears of today is, whatever is the challenge of today, whatever is the lack of today, whatever is confronting you today, not your fear of today can separate you from the love of God. So neither our fear for today no, our word is for tomorrow. How is tomorrow going to be? How will my marriage be going to the future? With what I'm seeing now, how will my children turn out? How will my career be? What hope do I have for tomorrow? Not even your worries of tomorrow can separate you from the, from the love of God. That's what the Bible says. Not even the powers of, the, of hell can separate us from the love of God. No power in sky above or the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. That is revealed in Christ Jesus, our God. My brothers and sisters, that, that's our confidence. That's our hope. And that is the reason we cannot give up. That's the reason we cannot behave like the unbelievers. We have hope for a glorious tomorrow. So I want to enjoy you as you journey into the future. Be confident. That yes, challenges will come because it will come, but it will not overwhelm you. God has already promised that where you are passing through the waters of life, He will be with you. And where God is with you, what does it matter who is not with you? He said, When you pass through the, the rivers of life, it will not overwhelm you, it will not drown you. I decree in the mighty name of Jesus that challenge, that problem, that thing that's confronting you, it will not overwhelm you in the mighty name of Jesus. God said in his word that when you pass through the fire of life, it will not burn you. The flame will not kindle on you. Whatever challenges are facing you, whatever needs are confronting you, whatever problems you are facing, whatever challenges are on your way, either marital or spiritual or health or job or career, I decree in the mighty name of Jesus, according to the word of God, and the Bible says, God honors his word, even above his name. He said it, he will do it. He said the the, 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 the fire of life will not burn you. The flame will not kindle on you. And I claim that for you. I claim that for myself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. Be thou exalted. Fulfill your promises in our life in Jesus' name. You saw David to a glorious end. Please see your children to a glorious end. David did not, was not consumed by the challenges of his life. Father, let the challenges of our life not consume us in Jesus' name. He was despised, but at the end of the day, you glorify yourself in his life. Father, glorify yourself in the life of your children. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let the challenges of life not overwhelm us. Make a way for us, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. 
In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. We hope you were blessed by today's sermon. Please subscribe to get up-to-date messages from RCCG House on the Rock. For further information, kindly send an email to info at hotrtx.org.